You might be wondering why you must learn mathematics and measurements to implement a wireless network. That's because the wireless network uses an RF signal, so you have to understand the basics of RF math. For instance, in order to determine if the output power of an RF transmitter is strong enough to get a signal to the RF receiver. In order to understand and perform RF math, there are a few basic things you will need to know, like the units of power measured in RF systems, how to measure power gains and losses, and how to determine the output power that you will need at a transmitter in order to get an acceptable signal to a receiver. In this module, you will learn about the components of RF communications and how they work together to help us get a certain type of strength of signal. We will also look into the units of power and RF mathematics. Time to refresh some of your math skills before going through this module. Uh, don't be scared. It would be simple as multiplying and dividing two numbers. So the title of our lesson is Basic Concepts of RF Mathematics and Measurements. In order to understand RF power, we are going to be using mathematics to understand terms like watt and milliwatt and decibel that we need to use to get the coverage and performance we want. A watt represented by W is the basic unit of power. One watt is equal to one ampere of current flowing at one volt. To give a better explanation of a watt, let's discuss the power washer analogy. Now, many of you are probably familiar with a power washer. The success of a power washer is based on two components, the pressure applied to the water and the volume of the water used over a period of time, also known as flow. These two components provide the power of the water stream. If you increase the pressure, you will increase the power of the stream. If you increase the flow of the water, you will also increase the power of the stream. A watt is very similar to the output of the power washer. The pressure is like the voltage in an electrical system, and instead of water flow, electrical systems have current, which is measured in amperes. So the amount of watts generated is equal to volts times the amperes. Many WLAN devices use a measurement of power that is one one thousandth of a watt. This unit of power is known as milliwatt. One W then would be 1,000 milliwatts. A typical access point radio usually has transmitted power capabilities of 1 milliwatt to 100 milliwatts. Decibel. Decibel is a unit of comparison, not a unit of power. In other words, it is a measurement of the difference between two power levels. This difference can be either a gain in power or a loss in power. For example, if an access point transmit 100 milliwatts of energy and the RF cable causes loss to that RF energy, we need to be able to quantify the change in power caused by the cable. In this case, the cable would have a decibel rating that identifies how it will change the power of the radio waves. The cable may be rated at 6 dB of loss for every 100 feet of cable. dBm represents an absolute measurement of power where M stands for milliwatts. Effectively, dBm references decibels relative to 1 milliwatt such that 0 dBm equals 1 milliwatt. Once you establish that 0 dBm equals 1 milliwatt, you can reference any power strength in dBm. The formula to get dBm from milliwatts is displayed on the screen. So this is the formula that you can use to calculate dBm. dBi represents a measurement of power gain used for RF antennas. Here the I stands for isotropic. The dBi value is calculated against the input power provided to the antenna to determine the actual output power in the direction in which the antenna propagates the RF signals. Let's talk about this concept of what we call the noise floor. The noise floor is the background level of radio energy on a specific channel. This background energy can include modulated energy coming from nearby 802.11 transmitting radios or unmodulated energy coming from non-802.11 devices, such as microwave ovens, Bluetooth devices, wireless telephones, and so on. Anything electromagnetic has the potential of raising the amplitude of the noise floor on a specific channel. You may have heard of this concept called signal-to-noise ratio, or SNR. The SNR is the difference in decibels between the received signal and the background noise level or noise floor. You may have noticed that when you speak loudly in a room full of people speaking, your volume doesn't seem so great. However, if you speak loudly in a room full of people whispering, your volume seems to be magnified. In fact, your volume is not greater, but the noise floor is less. 
RF signals are impacted in a similar way. Technically, SNR is defined as the difference between the noise floor and the signal in dB. The formula for calculating SNR is simple. S minus N, where N equals noise floor value in dBm and S equals signal strength value in dBm. For example, if a radio receives a signal of minus 75 dBm, and the noise floor is measured at minus 90 dBm, then the difference between the received signal and the background noise is 15 dB. So the SNR is 15 dB. Imagine you are in a cricket stadium. There's a level of noise that exists from everything around you. There's a certain volume that you have to speak in order for your neighbor to hear you. That level is the receiver sensitivity. It is the weakest signal that the transceiver can decode under normal circumstances. With that said, if the noise in a particular area is louder than normal, then the minimum level you have to speak gets louder. In WLAN equipment, the Received Signal Strength Indicator, or RSSI, is a vendor-specific measurement of the signal strength that states how well your device can hear a signal from an access point. It's a value that is useful for determining if you have enough signal to get a good wireless connection. RSSI is a relative value of the strength and quality of a RF signal being received by the antenna. RSSI values may vary between manufacturers. It is defined in the IEEE 802.11 standard as a relative metric to measure signal strength. The 802.11 RSSI measurement parameter can have a value from 0 to 255. The RSSI value is designed to be used by the WLAN hardware manufacturer as a relative measurement of the RF radio signal. When the topic of RF mathematics is discussed, and especially the logarithmic function, people do get scared. Well, nothing to worry about. Here's the rule that requires simple mathematics, such as addition and subtraction, using the numbers 3 and 10, and multiplication and division using the numbers 2 and 10. Simple, isn't it? So here is the rule of 10s and 3s. For every 3 dB of gain, that is a relative measurement, you are going to double the absolute power. So that's a multiplication by 2, and that answer will be in milliwatts. For every 3 dB of loss, that is again a relative measurement, you're going to take half of the absolute power, so that's a division by 2, and that answer will be in milliwatts. For every 10 dB of gain, you're going to multiply the absolute power by a factor of 10, and for every 10 dB of loss, you're going to divide the absolute power by a factor of 10. This is the rule of 10s and 3s, or 3s and 10s. For example, if you've got an access point, and it's configured to transmit at 40 milliwatts, so you've got an access point, and you've configured to transmit at 40 milliwatts, and the antenna is rated for 3 dBi of passive gain, so that's 3 dBi of gain. So the amount of power that will radiate out of the antenna will be 80 milliwatts. Following the rule you just learned, you saw that the 3 dB of gain from the antenna caused the 80 milliwatt signal from the access point to double. Conversely, if your access point is configured to transmit at 40 milliwatt again, so 40 milliwatts, and is attached to a cable that introduces a 3 dB of loss, so this time, loss, and it's 3 dB, the amount of absolute amplitude at the end of the cable will be 20 milliwatts. Here you can see that the 3 dB of loss from the cable caused the 40 milliwatt signal from the access point to be halved. So, if you're a network designer planning a network for your company, you will find that the rule of 10s and 3s will provide you with the numbers and accuracy you need to properly plan your network. Let's talk about EIRP. EIRP stands for Equivalent Isotropically Radiated Power. EIRP is the highest RF signal strength that is transmitted from a particular antenna. To understand this better, let's take an example of a flashlight. Let's assume that the bulb without the lens generates one watt of power. When you put the lens on the flashlight, it focuses that one watt of light. If you were to look at the light now, it would appear much brighter. 
If you were to measure the brightest point of the light that was being generated by the flashlight, that is because of the effect of the lens, it may be equal to the brightness of an 8-watt bulb. So by focusing the light, you're able to make the radiated power of the focused bulb equal to 8 watts. Antennas, just like flashlights, are capable of focusing or directing RF energy. This focusing capability can make the effective output of the antenna much greater than the signal entering the antenna. And because of this ability to amplify the output of the RF signal, regulatory bodies such as the FCC limit the amount of EIRP from an antenna. In this module, we talked about the units of RF measurement, RF mathematics, SNR, noise floor, RSSI, and EIRP. And then we looked at the tens and threes rule to plan a wireless network. I hope you understood all the concepts, and I will see you in next month.